Hello, this is the BBC News with Fiona MacDonald. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says he's shocked by the lack of help from international aid agencies a day after the Kachovka Dam was destroyed. In an interview with German media, he singled out the UN and the Red Cross. Mr Zelensky said it was impossible to tell how many would die without outside assistance. Now, a clear and prompt response from the world is needed to what is happening, but extensive efforts are needed. It is necessary for international organisations, such as the Red Cross, to immediately get involved in the rescue operation and help people in the occupied part of the Kherson region. If an international organisation is not present in the zone of this catastrophe, it means it does not exist at all. It is incapable. The Kenyan government says it has enough evidence to charge the leader of a doomsday cult with genocide and crimes against humanity. Pastor Paul McKenzie set up a self-proclaimed holy land in the remote Shakahola forest, where he convinced his followers to fast until they died, because the end of the world was coming. A woman in the US state of Florida accused of fatally shooting her neighbour through her front door last week has been arrested by police. Susan Lorenz had claimed to be acting in self-defence in line with the state's Stand Your Ground law. Paddy Maguire reports. The authorities in the city of Akala have come under mounting pressure to charge Lorenz, a white woman who shot a G.K. Owens, a black mother of four, on her doorstep. Police now say the shooting of the 35-year-old was simply a killing and there was no element of self-defence. The local sheriff said a G.K. Owens had gone round to confront the suspect, who had earlier shouted at and assaulted one of her children as they played close to her home. Police said it was the culmination of a long-running feud between the neighbours. Lorenz faces charges including manslaughter slaughter with a firearm. The Pakistani military has vowed stringent legal action against those it accused of rebelling against the state and its institutions during the unrest last month. Dozens of people are being tried in military courts in connection with violent protests, sparked by the arrest of the former Prime Minister Imran Khan in a corruption case. Here's Anbarasan Etirajan. In a statement issued after a meeting of the Pakistani military's top brass called the Formation Commanders Conference, it warned that it would move against those it described as planners and masterminds of the rebellion. Several army installations were ransacked in the violence. What the statement reflects is the military is angry and in particular very angry with Imran Khan and its supporters. Though it did not directly refer to Mr Khan but mentioned the unrest following his arrest. Mr Khan denies any involvement by his supporters in the violence. And Barasa Nitarajan. World News from the BBC. Britain is to host the world's first global summit on the safety of artificial intelligence this autumn. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will discuss the event when he meets President Joe Biden at the White House on Wednesday. He'll argue that the UK is the natural home of such an event as it ranks third in the world behind the US and China for AI innovation. The British government says the summit will aim to agree ways of evaluating and monitoring the technology's most significant risks. The former US Vice President Mike Pence has used his first speech of his campaign for the White House to condemn his former boss, Donald Trump. He told supporters in Iowa that Mr Trump had put himself above the Constitution and should never be president again. The French culture minister has paid tribute to the artist Françoise Gillot, who died at the age of 101. She said the world of art had been plunged into great sadness by the loss of an inspiring personality. A former lover of Pablo Picasso, Françoise Gillot was an accomplished artist in her own right. She was 21 when she met Picasso in Paris during the Second World War. West Ham have won football's Europa Conference League after beating Fiorentina 2-1 in the final. The the London club won the match with a last-minute goal to secure their first major European trophy since 1965. Here's Andy Swiss. It was goalless at the break, but after it, it all changed. The Hammers were ahead and suddenly their fans sensed glory, but their lead didn't last. The biggest drama, though, was yet to come, as in the very final minute, Jared Bowen had a shot at glory, and brilliantly he took it. West Ham were back in front, and as the fans went wild, this time they held on. Victory and euphoria for the Hammers, after decades of disappointment, a trophy and a night they'll never forget. BBC News.